All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're back with another episode in a different city. We're yeah. back in the GTA. Yeah. <laughs> Today we got a special guest, uh, you know, going on the theme of, you know, we just came from an event for the Brown Ballers. Shout out to Nevin. You know, yeah. he had a dope uh, event down in Edmonton and then, you know, just following up on it. We have Aryan Sharma today in the in the studio. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to cover a different facets today in our conversation. You know, we're going to kind of talk about the entrepreneurial, you know, role you want to get into now, you know, the the athlete aspect that you went through during college and everything, and then even, like, having a stint at the Montreal Alliance and how that all came about, man. So, you know, and even starting up your own clothing brand, you know, one that you're wearing right now. And yeah, actually, I'm becoming a fan. The more I <laughs> yeah. watch your videos and the way you produce content, it's actually so dope. I, yeah. I, I Like, this is not even to, like, kind of, like, hype you up, but, like, you don't see that enough in our community. I, no, I right. don't. The way you mm. create your content is actually so different. And then how it kind of speaks to you one-on-one. Because yeah. even that video you put up of him that uh, I think he was talking. What were you guys uh, in the con- in the reel he was talking about? Awful. What was it about? You know what I, I mean, though, right? I remember. I, yeah, I yeah, did yeah. share one of his things. It speaks to yeah. you like one-on-one. Yeah. No. And even like when you have your clothing brand and the way it was set up and how you're presenting it is different. So, you know, you know, Introduce yourself to the audience that no, might not know about it. you. Yeah, man. so <laughs> my name is Aryan. Um, first of all, a pleasure to be here. I'm super <laughs> excited to to chat it up with y'all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, basketball player, entrepreneur, creator. Um, my thing is I just try to go through life and share things from my perspective yep, and, yep. Mm-hmm. and just try to just be the best version of myself in whatever I do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I played basketball, um, University of Western Ontario. Um, I was on the Brown Ballers yep. team uh, since actually the first season. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I played uh, in the CEBL, Montreal Alliance. And uh, since then, you know, I've used basketball to kind of start my own things on the side, whether that's content creation. Um, I've, I've always had, like, a YouTube channel for the past few years that – I kind of just try to showcase that I'm more than just an athlete. Athlete, yeah. Um, and yeah. No, no, no. no it's, it's, it's actually pretty cool, uh, like, for your journey. Um, the thing is, like, a lot of people don't know how to pivot when it comes to um, after finishing your career. Because a mm-hmm. lot of the time, like, it's either, like, after you finish, you put so much time and effort into something. It's like, now you got to pivot off into a different yeah. venture. Like, how do you do that? And especially at a point where, like, for example, for yourself, like, you finished at Western University. Mm. now you're like okay how do i pivot into a way where like i can make a career out of something Mm -hmm. a lot of the times like especially coming from a you know a south asian household what is like the prominent thing to go into have some career that's set up whether it's in a well-established field accounting or be a doctor or be this Mm -hmm. or that and now like content creation is something that's a nuance in our community it is is, right you don't see many out there or they don't see that's a viable option that you actually can make a career out of it. You know, mm-hmm. obviously you you got to know the couple of tricks here and there, which you kind of looks like you're trying to hone in on given the videos that I've seen of you. So, you know, just going back to your early growing up, because your brother, yeah. he, I, he got signed for, with Virginia, Virginia, correct? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, over so, there right now. Yeah, yeah, so Ishan, that's his name, right? Yeah, Ishan. Yeah, so Ishan, so, you know, shout out to him. Man, shout this out thing. Ishan. <laughs> no, for real, man, because like Virginia, that that's that's not an easy thing to accomplish, yeah. man. Oh, yeah, How yeah, many yeah. like companies are hooped out and go to yeah. like is it D1 States. correct yeah. Yeah. D1 yeah. how many <laughs> Japanese D1 players are out there and you, uh, you know currently not that many yeah. like kind yeah. of, I, I don't know that many actually I don't no I don't think there's like because <laughs> one of the things like they were saying too like when they were recruiting him was like there's not a lot of there's like not. Indian or even like South Asian like athletes playing D1 yeah and like for Virginia like they're like high level too like they're in the yep. ACC they won the whole chip in uh in 2019 so it's like on that stage, like you don't see him. So yeah, shout you out don't. Ishan, man. Yeah, I know for real. Yeah. Like, Ishan. You, you gotta give a flower to the athletes that deserve. You know, one thing I see the similarity between you guys when you guys play ball, you guys got like this. You know when people you see the way they just move and bounce around. Yeah. You guys have this weird like elastic <laughs> way you guys jump. Yeah, Even yeah. the way you jump, and I see some you know, of the it's, dunks, it's so and I'm funny, like, bro. Because like, <laughs> me and Ishan's like our games are so similar. Yeah. But at the same time, like we're polar opposite. Opposite. Yeah. You know, like I got the athletic gene, and yeah. he got like the insane skill. Yeah. So like when you see his game, it's like everything is like super skilled. Like he's obviously a shooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my game is like a little bit more like on athleticism inside, above yeah. the rim. Yeah. Like yep. inside outside. So it's like, we play like almost the same, but it's so different at the same time. It's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, I no, don't know how. Like, cause... Look, sometimes it's just genetically the way you guys are kind of just like made as well, right? Because yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of the time, like, 
you know, these type of genes are not granted in our culture. Yeah. They're not. How many of you see brown kids out here doing windmills oh, or like doing <laughs> tomahawk? He don't. Yeah. No, honestly though, like I, I, I kind of like the running joke in the family is like, <laughs> how are you, my bro, with no bounce? <laughs> right? But like, it's crazy because like he won. So he won National Player of the Year this year. Oh, wow. Canada, right. Yeah. And uh, I was like telling him and I was talking to his coach about it. And I'm like, he might be the only person ever to do that without having dunked in a game. Crazy bounce. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like, it's crazy because like that just goes That's to show insane. you like, you don't need to be doing all these like crazy, crazy dunks athletic, or something to yeah. like, like he's like a walking example of that, yep. you yeah. know. And like, whatever. Every time I talk about, him, I'm a bit biased because I'm his bro and I love him and all that. <laughs> That's yeah, how it should yeah, be. But uh, <laughs> now, like, it's like, like I tell him all the time, like, yo, like, a lot of people, like you said, like they don't have like the tomahawks, the windmills, whatnot. But you don't, don't need it. Like yep. you won Player of the Year, and you didn't do it. Do that, yep. You know what I mean? You don't so gotta change like, for like giving what people think is right. Yeah. Your your basketball will speak for itself and winning, yeah. you know, as you said, athlete you know, of the year or for mm-hmm. the, or Canada and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like that's accomplished by what he has put forth, mm-hmm. not by what he should change to exactly. please other people or what seems appealing to other people's exactly. eyes. That's yeah. not gonna get you nowhere, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So even like myself, people always make fun of me. You always make he always make fun of me. He's like, bro, how you six three? You can't dunk. I'm like, I just don't got it like that. I can't jump. I just can't. Yeah. You know, he's gotta yeah. know yourself. So you know, yeah. it's like understanding your game and honing in on yeah, it. That's exactly. key. And then, you know, one thing I wanna ask you is your childhood and the mm-hmm. way you guys grew up. You yeah. know, obviously you guys are two brothers. You probably had a crazy competitive event. Yeah. How your parent, you know, kind of navigated you guys' whole situation? Because yeah. you know, obviously. Our parents, they're more gravitated towards what's the safer side, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what will lead to more you having a better career and just a successful career from what they have done. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they want. They want them to, you to surpass them. That's the end goal. And that's what everybody parents end goal, especially coming from, uh, you know, first immigrants and everything. And that's the goal. So how did that all come about? You guys pursuing basketball and the support from your parents and whether that was hard at the beginning or was that just like an easy thing that they were like, you know what, we support what you guys do. Because, you know, a lot of the kids do struggle with that, how they want to, you know, balance all that stuff. Yeah, so it's honestly like, and I say it all the time, like me and my brother have been like super blessed with like very supportive parents from the jump. Obviously, like in our culture, like like you said, like there's that pressure to kind of get into that high status career role because it looks good for you. It looks good for the family. Yeah, we, like yeah. it's, It provides you stability and whatnot. But I think like, for me, like, the one thing was, like, so my dad, he played high-level cricket in India. Oh, wow. And, um, and then, so he told, like, he tells a story that when he was either, like, trying to go full-time, like, athlete route or, because he, he he went to school for engineering. Like, mm. uh, like typical brown, <laughs> like, engineer. He's yeah, engineer, both my parents yeah. went to school for engineering. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, yeah, so so he's, like, his, his father, so my grandpa, was, like, he told him, like, you should go to school because at the time, there's no money in like advertising, Everything, it wasn't yeah, like that. Like how it, it wasn't is now, like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? And he he told us a story that like he was crying for days Damn. about it. So then he now like he was always from that philosophy that like if he ever has a, a kid that wants to pursue sports, he's gonna support it hundred mm. percent. And then like shout out to my mom too. Like she's always been like me and my bro. Like no matter like what we're trying to do, like I've convinced my mom to do some crazy things for me too. <laughs> like, I can't yeah. deny it. But like since uh, since we were a kid, like she's always been super super supportive. Um, it's funny because, like, they, there's always a supportive side, but then they also always place, like, a heavy emphasis on, like, school and academics. Yeah. So it's funny because, like, when I was in um, – I started university in health sciences to try well, to become, like, a doctor I saw that. myself. Okay, yeah. Senior, so you- and then I switched into business. But, like, for my whole life, too, it was always, like, hey, like, you should get into med school. Mm. You should get into medical – like, into the medical field. Um, but even through that, like – Sports was always, like, a way that they could just, like, support us, my parents. Um, I feel like once they started, like, realizing that we were actually taking it seriously and that this is something that we're not just doing as a hobby or we're not just doing it just because, like, yeah. yeah, just for the hell of it, that's when they started being, like, okay, you have our full backing. I mean, they, they've always been, like, you have a full backing, but that's when they started kind of, like, really investing in the fact that, Hey, you can get a scholarship. It might be something, right? To it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can play professional. Um, I was the first person in my family. I'm the oldest too, that took sports seriously. So for me in my childhood, it was almost just like we didn't have the information to navigate it. Yeah. Right. Because it was like there was nobody else. We didn't it's have a nuance any to it. Yeah. Exactly. So for my brother, though, on the other hand, like we've always like we we've already been through the experiences for me. Mm. 
So then they were almost just like even more like knowledgeable and like in tune of what to do and the right decisions to make and the wrong decisions to make and yep. and whatnot. So yeah, like ever since the childhood, like I know that's like not the norm, but that's what my me and my brothers thing has always been. Like we've tried to make something out of sports, whether it's like we got our education paid for or we got to play professional or it's like opening doors like just to have this, like a conversation like this is through yep. sports. Yeah. Um so we're trying to just kind of like narrate the path that like there is an opportunity through sports through athletics but it just has to be supported like by your whole circle right. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and that's the main thing too i'm like having um a circle around you that actually sees the same goal that you see through the same lens and supporting you mm-hmm. and you know a lot of the time that's some even nowadays kids struggle with that where parents like no this is not a viable option for your yeah. career mm-hmm. especially professionally because you know it, it is not easy you're not you're not going to make it to the nba like just like that it requires a lot of like sacrifice from all parties obviously you got to showcase whether you're actually serious about the support mm-hmm. and for you you got to showcase that to your parents and you know kudos to them they're seeing that potential in you guys be like you know what you guys can make a living out of mm-hmm. this or have some sort of outlay where this is something that's viable for your future mm-hmm. so you know having that it, it's actually it puts you at peace it because does. now you're it not does. you're not struggling with like okay my parents are like i can't really do anything with this mm-hmm. Do I just drop this and just go full time? As you said, I could go into go into medical school or yeah. or you know, whatever that would give them a peace of mind and give me, I guess, a peace of mind thinking that, oh, I'm doing something right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, it's not easy to navigate that for a lot of the kids that do struggle out yeah. there, you know. Just understanding that you gotta show the work and put yourself in a position to succeed. Mm-hmm. You know, That's and what and, and what's the one thing that you can say to the kids that do struggle with that, you know, that narrative of, or not even narrative, that's a reality of showcasing their parents and just kind of be like, this is something viable that they can do. Like, well, how would you say you can go about that or even pursuing opportunities outside or small things to do that, you know, now you're aware of, like, well, I could have done that mm-hmm. or I could have done something different, you know, looking yeah. back at your career at Western University or even in high school. I think the biggest thing especially for kids like right now that they need to use to their advantage is social media, mm-hmm. right? Like social media, like Instagram is almost a new LinkedIn it is, to it a is, certain it extent. Is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I feel like, especially like the, the resistance that like parents have most of the time is that they don't see the end goal or they don't see the future outcome or they don't see the progression of what it could lead to. Too, mm-hmm. yep. Right. So I think that kids nowadays like should really like hone in on the fact that like i can showcase my skills on social media it if you have an iphone it doesn't cost you anything you can record your games yep. yeah like when i was in high school my mom would sit court like sit and record my games <laughs> with her iphone and i'd like get mad at her because her like phone like her lens is <laughs> blurry yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like you can get like so i'm saying like for the kids use social media to showcase your talent like social media is such that if you're good somebody will find you yep. yeah and then the other thing is that if you're good also you can you have like proof right there like hey mom hey dad my Look video this, has gotten yep. this so and so has reached out this coach is interested this coach is interested mm-hmm. this can pay for my education right so once you kind of show them that like tangible proof yep. mm-hmm. i feel like that's when people like really start getting on board mm-hmm. but it's so easy now to get that proof on social media, media yep. right you just have to leverage it the right way yeah, and that's a powerful thing about social media nowadays, yeah. man. Thing is, like as you said, it's like a it's like an advertisement for yourself. Mm-hmm. You're advertising yourself to the world at a cost of nothing. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, as you said, like it doesn't cost anything for an athlete to put uh, just set up, have a small little stand on an mm-hmm. iPhone, yeah. record your game. It yeah. doesn't cost you anything. A lot of kids, like w- what they have to realize is it might be uncomfortable at first, yeah, or be like, oh, what's that guy doing? But mm-hmm. one thing that I I put a big emphasis on is just tune out the people that the noise. Yeah. Tune out that noise. It's going to be people you probably met in your life or like, or Orion, like, he's not going to go nowhere. Like, what is he doing? Like, mm-hmm. why is he doing this? Because you you're going to hear that noise yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, a lot of the time that one bad thing about like any community there is, it's like that negative side. Nine out of 10 times, people look at the negative side rather than what he's actually doing or what she's doing that can lead him to success, you know. And then one thing I do want to understand from you is how do you narrate all that negativity that you that you get or even like the backlash you might get from like family members or this, that and mm-hmm. just navigating all that because it's not easy, man. Mm-hmm. Like it gets to your head. It does, then yeah. you doubt, then you start doubting yourself but like is this something actually viable for myself? Mm-hmm. Like is this even worth it? Am I just, you know, sacrificing everything my parents did just for my own selfish perspective that I want from my life, you know? Mm-hmm. For me, honestly, like and I think I'm a little bit of a psycho for it but like <laughs> 
I love it. Yeah. <laughs> like when I get like negativity, like on a road game or yeah. people on social media or like people from my hometown who like they didn't think I could do it, do it or yeah. whatnot. I love it because it's just more, <laughs> it's more people to prove wrong. Yep. Yeah. Right. So for me, it was always just like when I was in, like for when I was in uh, university, I had a, had a list. I'd call it the kill list. Kill list. <laughs> right? And it was all the names of people. On like on on other teams who have either one talk something to me, yeah, yeah. B like, I just like, you just like, didn't like, I didn't like, like right? yeah, yeah. Um, or That's like funny. when the, when the crowd would when the crowd would be like saying like negative things, like yeah. it, I love it. So like all aspects of it, I just embrace it as much mm. as I can mm. because at the end of the day, like I've realized like the only people who are talking negative to you are a either jealous or b wishing that they were doing what you were doing, doing yep. or c have no way of doing it. Yeah. So they have to bring someone else down yeah, for them yeah. to be up. Yeah, yeah. And then I've always like been a strong believer of like, if you're doing the right thing, then people are going to hate regardless. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because doing the right thing and is not comfortable. It's not. Like yeah. you said. Yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of people, it's easier for them to want to tear someone else down rather than get, comf- get uncomfortable themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I kind of just like. Uh, and, I've, and I've also, like, read a lot on, like, the philosophy of stoicism and stuff. So, like, one of the big kind of takeaways that I've taken away, like, kind of to the point of, like, negativity is that I don't view people as, like, malicious or mm. that they're, like, negative towards me. I just view them as, like, unknowledgeable or, mm. like, misguided. Yeah. Right? Because I don't – I'm trying to give people the benefit of doubt where it's like, okay, maybe it's not an attack on me. Maybe it's just, like, you want to do something and you are struggling to find a path or whatnot. And it's easier to go about it this way. Mm. So I've always just been like very like, okay, you know what? Like it is what it is. It is yeah, yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, like I can't control what you say, but I, it's going to drive me even further to like prove you wrong. Yeah. Wow, okay. Well, they're even frustrating in their own sense of like, okay, well, one, what we were talking about before is like the circle of friends is like, okay, mm-hmm. they don't really have somebody to guide them. Yeah. In a sense of like, okay, how do they ba- overcome these, whatever struggle they may have or whatever they're going through. And like what you're saying is just like, okay, well, you if you see someone that's doing better than you, then you're trying to bring them down. It's mm-hmm. just so you can feel yourself, make yourself feel better. Yeah. Um, but one thing I w- I'm curious to know is that do you think the game of basketball has helped you overcome doubt whenever you're pursuing whatever you're trying to create? I definitely think it has to a certain yeah. extent. I think it's like it's hand in hand with like my personality. I think the one thing that's actually helped me overcome doubt too was just like my family support, mm. where no matter what like option that I wanted to pursue. Whether that's like making YouTube videos or starting a clothing brand, yeah, my family's always been like the biggest like cheerleaders for me. Mm-hmm. So having like a like having the first touch point be a positive one, somebody believes in you, kind of helps with all the other doubt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think like in terms of basketball, you're putting yourself on a court every single day, right? You're competing at a high level. Um, if you're playing away, like people are going to be trying to tear you down. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're also just going through like your own struggles. Like you can go through like a shooting slump or you can go yep. through bad games, injuries, whatnot. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, like basketball just teaches you to kind of just like get through the season, get through uh, the training session, get through the practice because mm-hmm. like, you don't really have another choice. Yep. So I definitely think that those two <clears throat> aspects go hand in hand for sure. Okay. Okay. And then um, kind of just building off of that. So how about for the, let's just say like, we're lucky enough, like with my dad, I'm lucky enough. I mean, I remember my, my dad and stuff. He fully supports the podcast, what whole, we do and all that stuff. We did a whole podcast with him. Bro, yeah, we did a whole. Um, this guy's been begging to for a part two. Too. But what I'm, what I'm curious to know, like even you know well enough that you have your own clothing brand, you're creating content online and knowing that it does take time to build. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some people who are just like, they just get into it, just the norm of that, you know, everybody else is doing it. So I should do it too, but they don't really understand the process behind it. Mm. So where do you come from that mentality side of things? Like, okay, this will eventually pay off. Like I have the patience for it, Mm. but there's also the risk that, okay, it might fail too. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to understand like your mindset behind that. My thing behind that is like, I always related to this. Like I I say this all the time. It takes 10 years to be a doctor, Mm. right? It takes however many years to be a lawyer. It takes five, six years to be an engineer. Yep. Mm. So why is this any different? Different. Yeah. yeah. If I start something now, I don't have any entitlement for it to just pop off right away. True. Yeah. Right. So I see it the same thing. It's like those are successful fields. Yep. Right. Mm. If I want to be successful, then it's like it's not going to happen right away. It's like yeah. it's the same amount of time. It's just in a different field. That's how I see it personally. And then like to your point about if it might not work out, I think 
you just have to accept that like really realistically like nothing might work out okay, like yeah. even if you go down a safe career path you might lose your job yeah yep. you might like, anything you might, not, you might not even get into med school you yeah, might not true. get into your master's program whatever it may be yeah so it's like what risks do you want to take at the mm-hmm. end of the day because at the end of the day like they're all going to be risks but which one's going to make you happier in the long term mm-hmm. and then like you said like we've kind of been blessed with like parents that have been fully supportive mm-hmm. but i think that also like to the people who don't have that support system yeah you just got to ask yourself whose happiness matters in the long term the time, yeah. yeah and sometimes like it's going to be a tough conversation that you're going to have like you might upset a lot of people you might lose support you might lose people in your life but at the end of the day like i always say like is the pain of option a which is not doing what i want to do and having these people mm-hmm. but knowing to myself that i should have done it yeah. is that more painful than maybe a tough conversation or losing yeah. a few people mm-hmm. most of the times the tough conversation is painful in the moment but long yeah. term it's a lot less pain than not reaching your end goal and goal yeah, yeah. True, true. that's so true and even talking about your coding by strive right so how long have you like what's the whole concept behind it like if yeah. people don't know about it like Tell us like where they can even get the merch and whatnot, where yeah. they can get the clothing brand. So what was like the whole content behind it? What brought it together for you, you know? So the, yeah, so it's called Strive and I started it in January of this year. So it's been, uh, what is it now? 10 months, 10 months since, I, yeah. since I started it. Yeah. And um, the whole philosophy on it, and it's kind of like the name Strive is striving to be the best version of yourself, striving to live your best life, striving to be who you want to be without the sense of I don't care what other people are going to think I'm going to do it regardless Um, and I honestly started it because it was honestly an outwards projection of my personality I Mm. felt like if I could put things on my body that resonate with me it was a win for me Mm -hmm. Um, so that's when it came to be and then the other thing is like I'm a firm believer in the mindset of the way you do anything is the way you do everything Everything. and it like it trickles into like all aspects of your life so for me I wanted to create clothing and create um pieces that I got wear that are the same level of, I guess, the same level of me trying to be the best version of myself. Yep. So if I want to be the best version of myself in this, this, this aspect of my life, I want the clothes that I put on to, to be resonate the best. Yeah, represent. yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and then it just became something that I just fell in love with, like, through the process of starting it. Um, like, I've done, like, I don't, I have no external people, like, helping me out in terms of, like, Website design, clothing design, whatnot. You do it all yourself. I do it all myself, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> so then it was just like, it was a challenge. Mm. It was a, like, so I had basketball and then I had something off the court where I could still try to compete, try yeah. to be like great at. Yeah. So it was like learning these things on the fly. A problem sol- a problem happens. Okay, how can I solve it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just became something that I just fell in love with. And then, so to, to, to how it is now is to a point where now I'm, Trying to just grow it, scale it as best as I can, um, get the word out there. Yep. And my thing is if I can create something that, so I have like a bunch of clothes in my closet. If I'm picking my own stuff to wear every time I go out, Yo, then yeah. I'm doing a good job. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. kind of my, my. No, that's true though. And, and that's such a cool perspective to come from because a lot of people just throw out there. They're like, oh, what's popular right now? Mm-hmm. But as we were speak, uh, speaking before the podcast, it's like the clothing bag that I resonate with who you are about, what you're about. Because a story resonates with people more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as weird as it sounds, like, it's like the story people that something that they can relate it back to. But like, wow. And now the clothing itself will speak volume. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, wow, there's a purpose behind what he's doing. You know, and even like some of your clothing, but I, I, I wasn't aware of it until it, like, I saw it today. I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to buy some. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, for yeah. real though, like even like, it, and what people don't realize is at, and what, what I think I said is like, a lot of the times, you've probably seen this, your friend circle, or people that you know that are close to you, they probably won't even go buy your stuff or even support it's you. It's true. Because so I'm true. like, <laughs> so yeah. true. like keeping it real, like people buy bullshit all the time. They spend 40 bucks here, 50 bucks here, but they can't go to their own friend just buy the clothing. It's not yeah. going to hurt you. Yeah. That you 50 bucks, 60 literally. bucks is not going to hurt you. No, it's for real. For me, like I see so many people coming up and then even like I met this clothing brand in, um, in California when we were there for a tournament. And uh, amount of people, he's like, man, he's like, yeah, I've been trying to do this, do that. And then a lot of the time, he's like, people around me, he's like, those are the people that like 
I thought they had my back, but they didn't. Yeah. yeah. Then for me, I'm like, that's the crazy part. And my friends started clothing brand. I'm buying. The, I'm buying whatever it is as much as I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Because why not? If you're my friend and you someone that I care for, you starting a new venture, I'm gonna support it. Yeah. You probably felt that too. <laughs> it's, it's so funny you say that because, like, first of all, like my circle, like my immediate circle, like shout out, we call ourselves the village. So shout out the village. The village. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look at the camera. Shout out the village. They all got strive stuff. So shout out y'all guys. This is not. This is not, this not for you. <laughs> but no, like I've had friends. I'm like. They're like, yo, yeah, like I'm gonna buy stuff like when I get some money. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. But then you're in the club, like, like <laughs> yeah. buying drinks in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was like, bro, it's so true. You know what I mean? It's so true. But I've kind of like, at the end of the day, like, I, I, I kind of try to like keep it so that I don't have a sense yeah. of entitlement where it's like, I don't think that anybody. Like, you should I, buy my shit. Yeah. 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 So it's like, if you like it, buy, buy it. it. If you don't, don't buy it. Like, I'm cool either way. But like my thing is like yeah like don't the the fake support yeah you know what I mean like, I hate that yeah. yeah that's the one thing I always tell people I'm like man I hate when people be like well I'll do this I'll do that but like you ain't gonna do shit bro. <laughs> yo, like, even, even if they do want to they're like yo just, they just give me one they give me one and they're like they don't want to pay the pay the price but like yo yeah. homie hook it up yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy is they hesitant in supporting the people around you but they're not hesitant to throw money away. With things that has no real meaning to it. Mm-hmm. As you said, going on a club, we're spending money on drinks, yeah. buying this or buying that. It's like it has no meaning to it. Mm-hmm. The meaningful thing that you could do is supporting your friends, whatever venture it is. Even mm-hmm. if it's something that they're doing, support it. Put it on your story. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't cost you anything. Right. You know, th- do something with it. At least show them support. It gives them a sense of hope. And like, I got people around me that support what I'm doing. It does, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. It, like, it, as you know, you could probably resonate to it. it it's for example, if it's one of his people that he didn't expect to put it on the story, be like, oh, it's about my friends, da da da. Go check out his clothing. That mm-hmm. gives you like, oh damn, like it makes you mm-hmm. feel good inside, it does, right? It does. it does, and yeah. th- th- that's a huge aspect of it, you know. Yeah. You think that like, like I kind of asking the question to you like now. So obviously, like I'm a creator. You guys are creators. Like you have this podcast. You yep. have all your. Uh, so you think that like because we know how much like it means to us you know oh, like yeah. when when your homie or your friend or your family supports mm-hmm. but like to the per- to the average person who doesn't have their own thing or their own creation yeah do you think they like really understand how much it means like you think they're doing it like out of obliviousness Perf- almost yeah. I, I don't think people are doing it like purposefully like they're trying to do something intentional because like yeah. a lot of like i've met friends that i know They'll throw slight like they don't think they're throwing shots, but in a way it is. It's like making it's, it's like yeah. mocking what you're doing. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's like, how's the podcast doing? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like they have nothing else to say. But like I know yeah. so many people that came up to me and said that to me, you know, where I'm like, bro, like for me, it's like if you really like they're like, oh, you're doing dope. It's like the podcast dope, but I'm like, you never liked anything. You never yeah, watched yeah. anything. You never shared anything. It's like, how do you know? But for a lot of people, they, they will never understand the purpose that you have going on in your life, they will never understand no. it. Yeah. What you love doing, it comes from a sense of inner will, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And other people not going to understand that because for them, it's just like, oh, he's just, they're just doing a podcast. Yeah. Like, they're just doing it for the hell of it. Yeah. They will never understand it. Or oh, he just started a clothing line. Like, who does he think he yeah. is, <laughs> right? That's, that's, valid. that's just human nature that comes out. Yeah. But for them, it's just, I don't think those people that have, that say that, I don't think they, um, a lot of times they just float in life. There's no real sense of purpose where yeah. they think outside of the box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, is I always try to resonate with people, no matter who who I come across. I don't care. Like even if it's your clothing brand, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see it, see it from your perspective. Because for me, it's just I'm like if I support someone, that comes from a sense of uh, understanding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of the time, people don't have that understanding. Right. Like why is it doing it? Mm-hmm. Like there's a reason why people enjoy certain thing or listen to it. So I think people yeah. are not oblivious. They know what they're doing. They just don't care to understand. I think yeah, that's what it is. It's like. It's funny because you say like, oh, like, how's your podcast going? And people say that. Yeah. For me, like, in my fa- like <laughs> my family, like, my friend circle, mostly, like, because sometimes, like, people don't really know how hard it takes, like, how, yeah, like, like, the work that it takes to do something. So they'd be like, oh, do you still do basketball? Oh, and I'm yeah. like, oh. <laughs> don't get me started on this. <laughs> yeah, it'd be yeah. crazy. Because I'm like, no, it's like, or they'll be like, oh, I'm, I want to put my kid in basketball. Yeah. Like, thinking that they're just going to, like, their kid's just going to do something. Do something. Well. Yeah. yeah. But I, like, I always, like, think in my head, I'm like, Guys don't know. No. Yeah. Like it's a lifestyle you <laughs> it live. Is, yeah. It's how you sleep, how you eat, how you yeah. like how you go train about your, your body. Day, yeah. You, exactly. Yeah. Like same thing with like, with your podcast. Like yeah. it's like a whole thing. Like it's it not is, just man. like a, oh you have a podcast. It's like oh, no. you have to do like the production, Bro, like, editing. editing. Yeah, you, like, editing is a you, whole. But people yeah. don't realize. 
I could make a minute, uh, like a minute long reel, but I'm sitting there making that reel for like an hour. Hours, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, th- this is, no, this doesn't look right. I gotta yeah, edit to this. To the millisecond. Yeah, right? and yeah. the thing is, like, people don't realize how draining that is. Day mm. in and day out, you gotta put consistent, like, yeah, obviously in this world, you have to put consistency. 100%. If you don't, like, if, for example, I remember, like, for like almost like a week and a half, we didn't post. Mm-hmm. Like, almost, yeah, I was caught up to two weeks. I'm like, damn, bro, I'm like, yeah, for two weeks, bro. I'm like the engagement is gonna go down. Yeah. I'm like people not gonna watch as much. Like, yeah, so now yeah, it's like yeah. it's like it's like a burden. You feel yeah. like damn, bro. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know what? We still got good content coming up. It's okay. People will resonate mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. We'll get on that train again of consistency. But people don't realize that though. It's like one, we already have a business ventures that we're working on. On top of that, stuff that we love doing, like which is a podcast and bringing new narratives and perspectives out on you know on um, on videos for people to kind of resonate to because we don't mm-hmm. have that enough in our community. I, I truly believe that we don't. You know, so, but it, it's mentally, it, it, it's, it's, it's draining. It's exhausting. It's draining. People, it's like, very exhausting. People think that because social media is kind of like a highlight reel, people think that it's easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> or people yeah. think that it doesn't take a lot of work. Like I was telling like, so example was, so I got a, like I moved into a new place yeah. and I'm like, okay, let me save some money and reach out to like, I, I think I reached out to like 50 or 60 like furniture brands, mm. furniture, desks, whatnot. Yep. Saying like, hey, like I'll make content for your stuff. Like, like how much? Yeah, yeah like What's if you can send me send me things. a thing, like and I'll, I'll review it. I'll make this this and this for you. So then I was like stressed because like I move in, I move like by the time I like finish moving in, it was like 10 p.m. at night. Yeah, I had to be up in the morning at five, but I still have to make like a deliverable. Yeah, yeah. right. And my mom's like, this is like hard. And I tell her, I'm like, this is work. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's either like it's either you have a job and you pay for this yourself, or this is like the other aspect of work. Like it's yeah. not like oh it, you, people like might think oh he got a free desk. Mm. But no, like I had to make nine videos for this desk. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I do, yeah. Right, like three on YouTube, three on TikTok, three on Instagram. It has to be yeah. meaningful content that other parties pleased as well. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, I just got a free desk. I worked for it. It's just yeah. a different avenue of work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and and that's, the, uh, you know, a lot of the time people don't understand that content creators, uh, creation side. They don't. Yeah. But at the end of the day, as we said, it's a nuance in the community. People will, I mean, you, people are going to talk whether you do good, as you said, they're going to talk down. Whether mm-hmm. you do something bad, they're still going to bring you down. Yeah. They're going to bring you down regardless. It's mm-hmm. As much as you can just kind of dissociate yourself yeah. with that type of energy. And you said understanding them from not as a negative, like uh, as you said, alluded to the perspective. Don't look at it as something that's negative. It's just understanding that they're not knowledgeable at something. They just don't know any better. A conversation can maybe change their perspective. If it doesn't, you know, you wash your hands, you move on about your day. There's nothing you can do. You can only control what's in your within your control, right? Mm-hmm. And just educating people on what you're doing is the main thing you can do. Having a platform like ours, like where we try to put out meaningful content where people yeah. can come back and be like, oh, like we have plenty of people that reach out, but like, you know, this story made me resonate about how our parents' relationship is mm-hmm. or how we view a certain things. And that's what us is the greatest accomplishment is that yeah. people can resonate to it and they can come out to us and speak about it. Cause that's what it is. And it's like, and when we have that sense of purpose, we're like, okay, we're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the negativity or like the people of lack of understanding, it just, you just got to put it behind and keep moving towards what you find fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And for for yours, like as you said, the clothing fi- uh, clothing brand is something that you know that fulfills you within. Yeah, because you some feel like something that you're putting out that is you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. So that's exactly. the greatest thing. And even with your content okay. creation, I know you started like you do every day, like day thirty five, day yeah, thirty six. Yeah. I think you're on day thirty seven. Are you right? So like I'm <laughs> trying to come up with like a new theory because like yeah. I I did so I did fifty at the start of the started, year, yeah. and then I did thirty five just now, and then so then I've kind of like took it taking a break just to kind of move and stuff. So now <laughs> that I've moved, settled in, now you gotta get back yeah, yeah, ramping back up yeah. again. Yeah. How hard is? Because you know what people don't realize that like as you said, it's consecutive fifty days you did it for, right? Mm-hmm. That's not easy. It's, oh, wow. I'm telling you, it's not easy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Consecutive. I know we met a lot of people where they did. Some people post every day. Some people can't do it every other day. That consistency of work and like to think of new ideas. A That's lot of the, the time, it can thing. be repetitive. Yeah. Like if someone goes on your page, we're like, bro, you're just talking about the same thing over and over. Like, why am I here? Right. Mm. How do you navigate that? That's, you know, that social construct of like, okay, I got to bring something new. Audience got to perceive this. Or even if you're putting a video out teaching about people mm-hmm. how to start something new. How do you na- how do you navigate all that and try to gain, you know, so, attraction? The, the one thing that I've kind of learned is that the easiest way to kind of just bring a fresh perspective is not by coming up with ideas. It's just by documenting what's going on in your in own life. life. Mm-hmm. Right? Because every day you're going through something new, you're going to have like a different experience. Like for me, like I've made videos of like, I watched this movie on Netflix. It was a quote that resonated with me. Mm. Or like, I have one video. It's like, I literally woke up and I'm like, today I didn't do shit. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's real life. It is true. <laughs> and it's like, if I'm going to do it every day, I'm not going to try to come up on camera saying like, oh, you know, today I was like very productive. Yeah, like, I literally came yeah, on camera yeah. I'm like, yeah, I didn't do shit today. I'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's like, no, that's real. But I think like, and then to like, to how to keep it fresh. Like, I think for me, if I sit down and like, I have to create something, I'm not going to create. Mm, I'm, yeah. not, I'm just like, if I force myself to create it, this is not going to happen. But I have like, I know the times that I'm creative, like one of them, is like when I'm in the shower, for some reason, like just ideas are coming. Yeah. Hydro bills going up. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm in the shower. And then I know like, so I have my like phone, I'm like right outside the shower. Cause I know like, I'm going to write all the ideas I came up with now. So then I have like seven, eight days worth of stuff. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, it's not going to be posted right mm. away. But Good at least idea. now I have that idea. Yeah. So it's like, for me, it's finding those like moments of like when I'm the most creative and like mm. really capitalizing on them to get that, a yeah. lot of stuff done for the times that I don't feel creative. Like even there's um, the like I forgot same. their I forgot his name, Kai. Like even Kai, yeah, like yeah. he does like streaming for like 24 hours, 48 oh, Kai hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he's just sleeping, just doing random bullshit, yeah. and people <laughs> and people, love it. people love it because it's so. I mean, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because it's so genuine. It's just. It's just him being him, mm -hmm. right? It's nothing fake he's doing and stuff. He's invited like, I don't think it was like Kevin Hart, yeah. all these guys, yeah, like some stuff, bullshit. Yeah. But the thing <laughs> is like, it, it, what you got to realize is we're in a different era. <clears throat> a kid yeah. that's 10, kid that's 11, they got a phone. Yeah. Right? Everybody yeah. got a phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Everybody got a phone. So for them, it's like capturing the audience in a different way. Like, obviously for them, they're doing the purpose. Like, because at the end of the day, it becomes a career to them. Because mm -hmm. that's what that's what their career is. Yeah. They got to... You know, I, I think there's one video I saw of him. He was talking about that, like, a lot of the stuff, some people, like, obviously, it's a privilege to have a platform as such where it's paying you such lucratively. Yeah. And you have the ability to do it at your own time. You're not constrained to anything. You know, obviously, you got to put production out there. But at least you have the luxury of, like, okay, I ain't got to wake up at 8. And then, you know, by the time it's 4, I got to submit this report. Yeah. You know, I got an employer talking shit about yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> Might yeah. get fired. At that <laughs> it is a luxury. But people are like, I saw this one video. I don't know who it was. Um, I think, I forgot what the streamer's name was. He's like, streaming is harder than working like a nine to five job or something like that, right? And then maybe in his perspective, it was. Maybe mm -hmm. it was. But a lot of the time, people don't realize like how blessed social media, if you're actually making money off of it, yeah. Yeah. what blessing that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and people shouldn't take that for granted. So if I think it's just, uh, social media is just a, such a, <laughs> it's a lucrative business. It's a business now. It is, it is. Right? And, and that's what like one thing we, I want to talk to you about is, I talk this all the time, uh, putting your morals or values over certain things. Because now, one thing that I hate, I hate, I hate is goddamn betting sites left, right, oh, center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, like, I hate oh, it to no. the core because, like, you go on Sports Center, like, before a segment starts, they're like, okay, in Toronto, Scotty Barnes, nine rebounds under or over, yeah. 26 yeah. under. This is the segments before the games. Yeah. As a 13 year old kid, 14 year old kid, this is what you're perceiving all yeah. the time. It's normalized now. But like, mom and dad, can I set up this account? You're 14. No, you can't. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And I hate it. A lot of people just, they're like, okay, imagine they have a platform. They're okay to advertise that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like, what are you teaching? You I know? Think, I think like it's, to your point about it, it's a privilege, but it's also a big responsibility. It is. Like you said, yeah. like 11-year-old, 10-year-olds have phones now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got data plans. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> For real. You know, like, I was like Fruit Ninja on an iPad that wasn't even mine. It's <laughs> <laughs> like you had four or five friends yeah. passing it around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but now, like, like people, like, it especially is these kids, like, yeah. these are like, when, when we were growing up, I'm, probably, I'm a little younger, but when, <laughs> I was, when I was growing up, like, it would be like the actors or like the, the athletes that you saw on TV. That would be your role models. But now yeah. it's like the people you see on YouTube, YouTube Instagram, streaming, TikTok, yeah. right? And a lot of it is what you said. Like some of it is just bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think it is a big responsibility of like you have to understand that this is not just you creating content, but it's what you're, you're actually yep. reaching people. Yep. Your voice is being heard. Like for the, especially like the bigger influencers like Kai Sanats of the world, you know, yeah. like the people with millions of followers who are doing this as like a full-time career they're like basically they're celebrities they are yeah right they're on mm. the same level of like, like a Hollywood rapper actors. or this yeah 100 yeah, yeah. Right? yeah so they they have to understand i think we all have to understand is that it's a big responsibility of what you're putting out yep. the message has to be such that it's not setting up the youth or setting up these kids who are watching it to mm. be bums 100 mm. percent. Mm -hmm. no it's so true and then that's the one thing that i always hated like i hated these draft kings that people that support gambling websites like they promote it 
like mm-hmm. stakes on their on their streams, this that. But I'm like, man, people don't realize is gambling debt is one of the lead made causes to suicides. Yeah, and people yeah. don't take that under consideration when they're promoting <clears throat> these platforms. When you engrave that at such a young age, and the audience perceive it, and they are they're picking up literally pe- people pick up loans mm-hmm. to gamble on these websites loans and what what does that lead to you know as unfortunate that is people a lot of them they can't pay it back or they picked up too much or yeah. they do end up committing suicide i have a different aspect because we, we, like, we, we, we had, had him go back and forth because he's like bro he's like why wouldn't you take it i'm like because morally it doesn't feel like if someone draft kings like yo can you promote this i'm like i couldn't yeah. even if they told me the million dollar i couldn't because really? okay. i know like in my head it's not gonna feel right when i wake up tomorrow knowing as you said, the responsibility aspect of what I'm mm-hmm. telling other, the, what's normal for the youth. Because it's like, if you, I don't know, let's say if, because um, my, my thing is like this, is like, okay, well. They're going to get ga- it somehow. Gambling, I mean, I'm not saying gambling is good, <laughs> right? At the end Gamble day, responsibility. <laughs> Gamble responsibility. <laughs> but my thing is like this, like, you can't control what a person does at the end of the day. Yeah. If we don't, if they, I'm not saying like they have, like, they're going to gamble because we're promoting it. But they're going to see that regardless whatever advertisement it is, right? Whatever marketing it is. Like, there's a bunch of other podcasts that are like, I don't know, The Pivot. They have, uh, what is it, DraftKings, right? They don't have it anymore. Was it Fanatics? Fan- they have Fanatics. Well, Fanatics, Fanatics is different. No, Fanatics, Fanatics is a clothing brand, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. But, yeah. But, they, but there's a bunch of… They did uh, have DraftKings before. Yeah, they had DraftKings before. But it's just like, okay, well, at the end of the day, like, you got to do it for your own benefit. But the viewers, the people that are watching it, it's their own responsibility. Like, okay, well… You know, maybe this this is maybe this is not something that I should be doing, right? <laughs> yeah, it, there's a hard I, balance between I, the two. I see what you're saying. I see what yeah. you're saying. Like, I'm almost. I think I'm like in the middle ground of both. Yeah, of you guys. Like, yeah. I think like because I strongly believe too. Like yeah. some people, they just need to take responsibility for their own action. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like it, you can't babysit everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like I'm thinking, just like on the other side, it's like, what yeah. if like, what if I was a kid? 10, 12 years old, yeah, yeah. I didn't really know what gambling was. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because I think, I, like, to be honest, I think gambling is like certain, like at a certain point, it's, I think it's an addiction. It, it is. It is. It is. Right? Yeah. So like a 10, 10, 11 year old who doesn't know, let's say, for example, let's say their favorite streamer is supporting like mm-hmm. a gambling website. website yeah. And then now they don't really know what it is and they go up to their parents like, oh, I want to join this site. Yeah. Yeah. Parents like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, they don't know any cool. better. They don't care. Right? Yeah. So then now it's like that kid who's only started because his favorite person was doing it <laughs> yeah yeah now he might go down that path, path, path yeah, yeah. where it's like i think there's like a definitely a balance it is i man. think you have to know your audience too like that's true that's true like that's if you key. have like a bunch yeah. of kids then don't yeah. promote that yeah, yeah. no it's key it, though because yeah. like even like if you look at your friend circle you my friend circle so many even my cousin every other day he's like fuck he's like having a bad day why <laughs> the ticket didn't hit i'm like i don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> i do not gamble like for me i'm like i don't care about it. like i do not yeah. like i never done it like, my cousin uses my account because it's lucky. This is how superstitious <laughs> they are. Like, this is crazy. He's like, I'm like, use your own account. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I've been lucky on yours. Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> You're going to put the same bet on yours. What does it make a difference if it's on yeah. mine? But this shit like this occurs. It gets out of con- like, I, yeah. I have one friend. I have one friend. Like, he like he tells me. So, he he has a yeah, he gets a haircut every week. Yeah. So, he tells me. I just gambled to get my haircut paid for. <laughs> I Damn. just forced bet to get my haircut paid. I'm like, you're smart. <laughs> you're very smart. He's strategic with his yeah, so <laughs> gambling. And he's like, cause he's like, he puts like twenty dollars down here, ten dollars down here. I'm like, I just need fifty bucks a week to get my haircut. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's so funny. But then I have like other friends, like you said. <laughs> nah, like I'm not coming to yeah, the, having to a the bad thing day tonight today. because I'm like, why? <laughs> the parlay didn't hit. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's it's crazy, dude. I'll tell you a funny story actually. So it was a game that I played in. I'm not going to say when or whatever, but like I, <laughs> there, I was on, like I had a, like a, whatever, over under on me. Yeah. And then I didn't play well this game. <laughs> right. So then. <laughs> Matt's weeks, DMing you. No, no, not even that. It's even worse. A couple weeks go down, down the line. It's maybe like one o'clock in the morning. I'm in bed. Right. I get a call from one of my, boys, FaceTime call. Right. I pick it up. I'm like, why is he calling me at 1 a.m.? <laughs> yeah. He's at the club. <laughs> popping bottles he starts yelling you're underpaid for this oh, I was sick what the fuck? I was so yeah. mad that's so yeah. mad yeah, that's nah just, that's I crazy I was so mad I started doing push ups at 1am <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so crazy yeah, yeah. Yeah. no man this shit uh, gambling's getting out of control for some people yeah. bro and my thing is though like <laughs> I'm not gonna lie like I do I do play the lottery 
Like every week. <laughs> it's going to hit. Yeah, yeah, like I'm like, I'm like, I strongly believe I'm winning the lottery one day. And I tell myself, like, I'm like, I'm gonna only win once if I do win. <laughs> yeah. And if I win, I want it to be like one of the bigger, bigger ones. ones. You know, so yeah. I only like enter if it's like 30 you plus. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, if it's like 17, then I'm like, ah, I won the small. <laughs> but yeah, you. that's that's the one day. I don't like yeah, like, I don't I don't sports but one because like I just don't pay attention to like sports that much. For me, yeah. like I don't watch like when I was playing like basketball like in university, like I was watching so much of my own film that I didn't have time to watch NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just didn't you don't know what's know going what's on. Going on yet. Like all my my boys would be like sports betting or in fantasy leagues. <laughs> I'm like I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Me like I don't even know what music is dropping. Y'all gotta send it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm like locked in. No, that's where. So I was like I didn't like that. I never got into it. No, but, no, yeah. no. You know one thing we do want to touch upon is um, you know, obviously you know as we talked about the start of the podcast uh, brown ballers. You know, started started from Nav- uh, Navina with the idea of uh, putting, you know, people on a platform where it doesn't have to be just a basketball player. It could yeah. be any fields, as you said. It could be a business, or it, it just what does it mean to be a baller? You know, and obviously you you work with him as well to try to elevate that platform mm-hmm. to where you know we can have people out there with more eyes on our athletes in a South Asian community, you know. So speak on the experience working with Novin and what that platform really means for you guys and even playing for India Rising. No, did you play in the first? I didn't see you play in the first. Yeah, no, I played did in you the play first, the first one? year? Yeah, the first one, the second one. I didn't play in this past year because mm. I got surgeries over the summer. Yeah. But hopefully be back next no, year. No, no, 100%, yeah, so. man. You guys balled out. The first year was crazy. I took yeah. everybody by the I was watching. I was yeah. watching live streams. <laughs> yeah, you know, that take the, yeah. before that, like if that, if Bomb Brothers didn't promote it, didn't put it out there. I wouldn't have watched that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Realistically. Yeah, no, it's crazy because like, yeah, first out, like first, shout out G, shout out Nav. Like yep. what they've done with like Brown Ballers, like in, what, is it only three years three now? Years, yep. it's, in, it's insane. Such a short time, yeah. It's insane. And one of the biggest right? platforms out there. And it just goes to show you like how many people are so passionate and invested. And like you said, it's not just basketball players. They got tennis players. They Soccer, got yeah, cricket. authors, crickets, cricket, you know, like everything. They've got everything on there. Mm-hmm. But like, I think like, the big so how it happened was actually like I got a call, like the the first year that I was playing, um, and it was from from G from Gotham. Yeah, and uh, he told me, hey, like we've been watching you play. We're interested in you joining this league. And at at the time, like I didn't realize what how big of an impact it was. I at first I was just thinking this is a great basketball opportunity. Yeah, yeah. and then as things happened, like that summer we went to um, NFT NYC to do a three on three. That was when I met like some of the guys. For the first time and then a month later it was um it was a tbt the first year in syracuse Sarah, yep. and we were having training camp here in toronto like some of the guys actually were staying in my house like oh wow it hit me like this is so much bigger than bigger basketball, basketball. Mm-hmm. Yep. you know and i have like my aunt told me a story she was like the first year she has friends in dallas they don't know me i don't know them there's like no connection mm-hmm. but they hit her up they're like we're watching your nephew on tv that's crazy oh, shit. and i'm like wow like people are actually like Tune really in. tuning in yeah, they're yeah. buying in um that's crazy <laughs> like my, my my friends were hitting me up like yo we were out at a restaurant and we saw you on espn like, crazy oh, shit. and i'm like how Damn, crazy like, is that <laughs> it's crazy and i'm like this is not even just like for me it was just like they're watching everybody mm-hmm. yeah you know and like i feel like brown ball is now and especially like i've been like like you said like i've been working with nav too yep. uh me and g are close like and i've been around kind of since like the first year of it so it almost feels like Brown Ballers is like a platform for all of us. Yeah. Mm. Like it's not like it's it's mine, it's yours, it's yours, it's Nav's, it's G's. Like it's as much as ours as it is anybody, anybody else's. else's yeah. And like so me and my brother, we did a QA a few weeks ago at Nav on Brown yeah. Ballers, like a live QA, like a live stream. And uh there was so many like cause I was like we were we were doing it on IG and there were so many comments saying like you and your bro have inspired us or yeah. especially about my brother with like playing in in, in um in Virginia. Like, Virginia, yeah. We're like we're cheering for you, we're rooting for you. Um like we've got your support, Ishan. Like you've got our support. Like we want a jersey from you. Like crazy. And it was like I took like after the thing ended, it, it took me, but I was like, I take a step back and I'm like, this is this is crazy. Like yeah, yeah. this platform, Brown Ballers, is actually having such a big impact. Right, mm-hmm. everybody. And like we said, like social media, you know, like Brown Ballers is a platform that's like literally standing proof that you can do something out of the realm of normal Normal, for South Asian parents. Parents, Mm -hmm. Like kids can literally show that account. It's like however many tens of thousands of followers that can show that account to their parents. Like, look, yeah, like this is something that's that's real. I'm gaining, yeah. Yeah. I think I think they also what you said about showing your parents because I um, 
Even Habir. We talk about Habir all the time. Habir, this guy's yeah. in, uh, he's at Juco now. Okay. Uh, originally from Edmonton as well. And, uh, well, I don't want to mention too much of it. But, you know, <laughs> he, he's he's getting offers now from other places too, from other states too. And uh, I know how we're talking about, you know, how he introduced uh, basketball to his parents. Because, I, mean, I mean, of course he had that difficulty trying to like prove it. Like, okay, this is something that I could pr- pursue instead of just a, the normal norm. Mm-hmm. Um, and what he did was like, you know, he showed it to his parents, like, "Hey, this is there's another brown dude that's playing basketball. This is what he's doing." And so he brought started bringing his parents, especially his dad, um, to the games. To now where they fully support him yeah. to what he's doing now, and um, yeah, it's just like it's just proving uh, based off what you were saying too. It's just like okay, well, because of brown ballers, because of how big of a platform it is now it's much more comfortable being able to have that conversation with your parents. Like, hey, look, there's yeah. literally a platform mm-hmm. just for brown ballers that whether if we want to become a cricket player, baseball, whatever it is, mm-hmm. yeah. that I can do it too. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So That's, For me, like, yeah. sorry, no, 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 go ahead. No, nah, like, the biggest thing for me that, like, brown ballers kind of taught me and, like, most people, like, don't notice. It's, like, very behind the scenes. It's, it's the so... The tedious thing. There, so, the, I got a call from G and... February, the year that it started. Started, yeah. So the December, um, one of my boys, Sam Bachu, he has like the Elevation Nation. He, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he, you know, I, was, I was on Christmas break. It was during my season. I was on Christmas break. And he hits me up. He's like, hey, I'm holding like this like showcase camp. Like come through. I'm like, okay. So I came through. And then we had like a scrimmage at the end of the day. At the end of it. And I was killing the scrimmage. And yeah. I was going like hard. hard. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. like there, I was going 110%. <laughs> like I didn't care that I was on rest. And I didn't know. Like it was just like, that was just. You feel like I it was, was a random event. Yeah. I was, yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah. a random event. Months down the line, I found out that that was almost like my tryout. Crazy. Oh, shit. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they saw, wow. like, they really took notice of me from that camp. And it taught me that like brown balls in general, like taught me that valuable lesson that like no matter where you are whether it's a showcase or yeah. uh, you think it's a random camp right whether you're on espn mm-hmm. you got to go 110 percent, like regardless of it showcase what right? you're capable of because like if it wasn't for brown ballers and it wasn't for that showcase Chasing, camp yeah. and it also wasn't for like my own mindset that hey yeah like i have a few days off my season like this should be time for me to chill but i'm like no nah, if i'm on a court i'm going you're going yeah mm-hmm. right so it's like that that lesson that like that was connected to brown ballers like yeah I don't like tell a lot of people that, but that one was like really what taught me like, hey, like you got to go. Like yeah. if you're going to do something, you got to go. You know, that's so true. And you know, like one thing I do want to say is commendable from your aspect is because you are so young, man. Like we are, like obviously we're, we're older than you, like a couple of years. But one thing I will say is that's commendable mentality. You know, to have that mindset, um, understanding where you are or where you are in life, no matter what settings you are, you got to display yourself at the fullest. Because mm-hmm. you're doing a disservice if you're not. Yeah. Because you never know, as you said, who's watching. Whether it's in the business setting, if you're not at the full capability of being ready to present yourself mm-hmm. in a manner where it resonates who you are and then then some, like people not going to take you serious. Exactly. Imagine if you came in the camp just shooting bullshit threes right? and just doing bullshit. Uh-huh. And no one's yeah. going to care. But like, bro, we don't want that type of character mm-hmm. resonating with that platform. We don't want mm-hmm. that in our team exactly. for Indian Rising or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And right. then it's like think about like the butterfly effect that or like yeah, domino yeah, it effect, is. butterfly effect. Because yeah, yeah. it's like if if you said like if I came on some bullshit in that camp, and I was just messing around, wasn't taking it seriously, maybe brown balls would have never happened for me. I wouldn't have been yep. on the team, 100%. Yeah. right? Then that platform wouldn't have been started. Yep. Maybe yeah. we wouldn't even be having this have conversation, conversation right now. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean, so like think of like one decision of just going hard at a camp or a showcase. Like look at how mud many things that's opened up for you down the line. Like, mm. I kind of keep that in mind mm. where it's like, you never really know what one thing will do for you. Yep. What are your, okay, so since we're talking about this, then I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on Bronny, Bronny going into the game, going into the NBA. Yeah. Especially knowing that his dad had kind of like, quote unquote, like a safety spot because mm. his 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 father is, you know, his LeBron. Yeah. Right? What are you talking about, man? Bronny's not, not good? I'm not saying anything. anything. I mean, you watched him yesterday. I watched it yesterday. Six seconds. I'm not going to say anything. Solid six seconds. You. But hey, he got his fame. (laughs) But, but what I'm curious was like, okay, well, because his dad's in the in the league, he had this you know leeway of getting into the league. Very, I mean, like just trying to like, like I think it's what four percent of NCAA players get into the league. Yeah. Right. 
even before that, like, even just trying to showcase yourself, like, how many, like, I don't know how many athletes there are, how many basketball, let's just talk about basketball specifically, like, how many basketball players are there in the States? Like, just who play basketball, like, millions. Yeah. Yeah. And the 4% of that, even, not even 4%, man, it's just like. No, it's only like, what, three, 400 players that make it? Yeah. I don't know, so what's an average team? To the three, NBA? Yeah. yeah. How many team, how many players in a 15, think, I think? You know, 15, yeah. 15, so 15 per team. times 30 yeah. is what, yeah. and like, every year the draft yeah. is 60 people. So, like, 400 Think about it. That's all around the world. It's not just constrained right, to US. Yeah, yeah. Europe. This is the world trying out for the Heck, they're they're like, they're focusing on overseas players now. Bro, yeah. it's a better chance of winning the lottery than making the NBA. Because yeah, the, yeah. the mentality of overseas is like their their game plan is like to focus on practice rather than on the games itself. Yeah. They play the game the right way. Yeah, yeah they play the game the right way. Here it's completely opposite. They're focused mm-hmm. on just, you know, to show what it <laughs> is. Yeah. Yeah, for clout. But I mean, kind of going back to what I was talking about, Brawny. If let's just say if Bronny did not have LeBron, like let's say she's just a random kid. Oh, like, is he making it on the team? Yeah. Oh, no. hey, you don't think? So? Oh, I don't think. I, I don't first think. Of all, no, I yeah. like Bronny. Like, Lakers I like, first team. I, yeah, I like Bronny's game. I do. I've yeah, always yeah. been like. I, I always say like I genuinely think he's a good player. Yeah, but he's not making it. Would he yet. be on the Lakers? I yeah. don't think so. No, like, no, no let's no. keep it real. I agree. Heck, but, I mean, how about the G League? <laughs> that one's tough. I think he would make the G League. I think he would. Well, yeah. he is. Thing, he does have athleticism on he him. Does have, he's like six he's, three, and he's like he's athletic. He he's got athletic. a forty yeah. plus vertical. Yeah, he yeah, can, he can guard. guard. Yep. People compare him to his dad, though. See, that's that's yeah. the problem. That's the problem. They're two like, different games, man. They play different. Not even yeah, different games, just different people. Yeah, yeah. like look at their builds. Like <laughs> yeah. they're not even close. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think like it's also like interesting though because it's like people say like Bronny had it easy because his dad's LeBron. He got a clear path to the NBA yeah. yeah but then on the flip side like remember how much like hate uh, Napo baby <laughs> remember how much them. hate who was it uh, Lonzo Ball got when yep. he first got in the oh, league because yeah, yeah, of LeVar yeah. LeVar yeah, 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 yeah like think about that like you have to understand like I think people like also like lose the fact that like how was Bronny like 20 19 yeah 19 19, 20 yeah. yeah right he's a kid <clears throat> he's a kid like, think about yep would you want your kid going through that pressure, pressure yeah. like, or would you want like, your kid to go through that the hate that he goes through so it's like he got it easy, yes, as in like maybe the path to the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like all the other aspects of his life, like yep. it it almost like balances out in my opinion. That's why mm-hmm. like like for Bronny, like I never I don't like want to talk shit because I talk shit about him because I think like he's a good player. player yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would he be in the NBA if it wasn't for his dad? Probably he's not. not. Yeah. But yeah. you can't take away from like his character as a person just being able to deal with being LeBron's kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, that's that's what people forget. Thing yeah. is, bro, like think about it. He his world is in the front four pages of everywhere. You do something wrong, oh, mm. LeBron raising a kid that's ignorant or they, they can't even be kids. Yeah. I'm, 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 like, think back, like anybody that's watching, even yourself, myself, amount of the time you have done something fucked up, imagine if it came out in the public, they'd be like, this guy's mm-hmm. a clown. He lived to a lens where he had to be this perfect kid that he can't tarnish what his dad has built. Mm-hmm. You know how, pre- that's a lot of pressure to live with. Oh, yeah. At a, such a young age, you can't do what the normal kid does because how is it going to look out on paper because my dad's going to, uh, image going to get tarnished or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. He never says anything negative. Even if you listen to his post-game press conference or even like practice, like listen, listen to him. Yeah. He sounds like someone who's like 25 plus, like professional that gives you the right answer. You know, obviously given his dad, like his profile, we see, you know, to a certain extent, he knows how to navigate that. You know, he has an advantage, but at the end of the day, guess what? It's him in front of the cameras. It's yeah. his 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 thought process. It's him as a person. Nobody can speak for yeah. him. You know, no money. That's him as a person. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's just like for him. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, yeah. but you know, it it comes with that's just life. Mm-hmm. You know, it, that's what it is. Well, who, there is a lot of yeah. unfairness. There could be a couple <clears throat> European players that do deserve that spot over him. There could be mm-hmm. some other players that deserve that spot over him. Hundred percent. That's a valid you know conversation to have. But, yeah, I understand what you're saying, though. <laughs> yeah. No, but there's this... I mean, I didn't understand, like, the whole part of... Because, for I mean, of course, we came from a middle-class family, mm-hmm. right? So, for us, it's like, okay, we... I want to say we had... We learned stoicism quick enough. Mm-hmm. I think it's just because what I'm trying to say is that, okay, we have the privilege to make mistakes mm-hmm. and not be judged. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Besides our close friends, whatever. But for him, like what you're saying, like Bronny, LeBron, like they had to like present themselves as perfected as possible. Literally. Because yeah. 
if they made one mistake, not only would Bronny get at fault, like crucified, right? Bro. LeBron would for being being a bad mm-hmm. father, yeah. right? So for them, for Bronny to even like to even like be very cautious on what he does, on top of the fact that I try to live up to his father's name, mm-hmm. man, that's a whole another pressure. It is, like, yeah. Heck, you have to learn. You have to learn how to be stoic at a very early age for yeah. that too. Or think about like yes, you were at the game yesterday, right? Like yeah. I saw on social media, like they were chanting Bronny, right? Yeah. At the end of the game. game, and this is at <laughs> right? like even like yeah. at the end of the game, if you think how many fans stayed back yeah. and they they were cheering, mm-hmm. yeah, as loud as they could, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like think about it, like in terms of like imagine you're his, like imagine you're his teammate, yeah. you know, and it's like mm. he's the fifty fifth pick, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and it's like there's gonna be like that even like that tension, like yo, like. This guy's only here because of his dad. dad like, 100%. Yeah. And then it's like, you can't even be like, it almost just like changes the whole dynamic of the team too. It does. Like I've seen like, I've seen like a coach. It does, yeah. Is the father of a player. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that's happened in the NBA. Like I've been on teams it where like the, the coach's too. son plays on a team. Doc Rivers. Right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like literally like, but like it is like a, a slightly different dynamic. But like imagine timesing that by like a million. A million. LeBron's your dad. dad you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, like, true, it's true. Responsibility is different, man. But, yeah. you know, you can't do anything about that. Yeah. That's just what it is. People, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a good story. Like, yeah. even if you look at, like, like Michael Jordan's son, he had a decent career in college. Like, not bad, but mm-hmm. couldn't live up to the expectation of what they thought his dad was. Mm-hmm. And that's, a, you know, unfair kind of narrative that they want to paint for their kids coming up. Like, you're not, not, they're not going to live up to the expectation. They're not. You know, they're going to have stopping an unrealistic expectation of especially kids, man. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. painting them in such a negative light, be like, no, man, like, he's a Nepo baby, this, that. Yeah, it might be so, but nevertheless, he put him in a position to be where he is today. You can't be like, no, he's a scrub. You can't say that. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he, he's a hooper. He can ball. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's certain advantages you get, but that is life. You know, mm-hmm. th- it is, sometimes it is unfair. You yeah. can't do it. That, it. That's valid, you know, but you can't just hit on a kid because oh because his dad brought him all along but he's crafted his game to a point where you know he is a player well know? i mean who who wouldn't want to see their kid in their best situation like, story, do better right? them too, yeah, right? yeah. like i mean i, I wouldn't blame lebron like no at, at the end of the day like we would do the same for our kids 100 percent, right 100 percent. um but I do. <laughs> he does some say crazy stuff. Remember when he said when he was coming out of college, he's like, "Bronny could replace." What he says, seventy percent of the oh, league. Yeah, yeah, Remember that comment? Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. Whole, he, I'm, he knows that I'm a biggest LeBron fan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he makes comments like that, it's like, why, <laughs> why, yeah. why? I understand you're cheering from. Why say that though? Yeah, I think yeah, that's a, that's a tough one because it's like. We all know, like, <laughs> if, like, my dad would say that. <laughs> you know, like, my dad one time. Like, that's went, true, you know. My dad yeah, went to the, to the, to the, my coach one time and was like, yeah, you know, like, Ari's been training with NBA guys and like, doing this, this and that. So my dad would say that too. Yeah, but yeah. I think, like, yeah, like, my dad's not LeBron, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, like, he, there's definitely, like, I think he's been doing a good job where it's like he's been kind of, but like, yeah, yeah, I think there is going to be those times where he's like, He's gonna put his like dad side first, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll watch so many of these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, which is fair, man. Yeah. But you know, as we're kind of winding down our podcast, like we touched upon different segments as your clothing brand. We talked about brown ballers. We talked about you know how your your come up was even how you were raised by your parents and how that whole process and journey and even for the kids that feel like they don't have that support, how you can go about it. You know, what's like one of the message you can like give out to the kids that. Or no matter in the realm of, doesn't matter, not even South Asian, just kid in general that's pursuing mm-hmm. sports or pursuing content creation, pursuing something they love, they could be clothing brand or whatever it is. What's something that you can kind of, you know, speak out to and kind of give us some advice? Because you, you are younger than them. So what's what, not younger, they, they're looking up to you at, a, at this point. You're, you're like a role model for them, you know, because they're like, oh shit, I want to be like Aryan, you know, like, no, it's for real. Because like, there's going to be some kids be like, bro, yeah. I, I love what he's doing. He was just he's good at basketball. You did put up good numbers in the Western. You averaged like throughout your career 15. You had some injuries and whatnot. But 15 is not easy. You began an average two or three. Like, I don't know, 15 is real, right? So I think the first thing is that you have to understand what your own why is. And you have mm-hmm. to be delusionally confident of yourself. You have to think about it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. If you convince yourself first, then the rest of the world is going to be easy because you're, you're going to be your own biggest critic. Mm-hmm. Convince yourself and become a cycle of the work that you put in yourself, whether yep. it's basketball, whether it's clothing, whether it's content, whether it's whatever it may be. Yep. You have to become an absolute cycle of the work that you put in yourself mm-hmm. first. Yep. 
then eventually that work is going to have some form of output or people are going to see that you're going to be putting in that work. Yep. That's when you can go and show the world or show your family or show your people who you want to convince to be invested in you that, hey, this is my goal. This is the work that I'm putting in. This is the output. This is why it's going to happen. Yep. And at the end of the day, like with everything that we talked about it, certain things just might not happen. That's just the way of life. You can't mm-hmm. control that. Yep. But on your own end, control every possible thing that is in your own Control every possible thing that is in your own control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, honestly, and then if the people don't support you, you got to ask yourself, is it even worth it Yo, true, to true. get their support? Yeah. Yep. I think cert- if you believe in a goal to a certain extent so much that if one or two people don't support you, or even if your family doesn't support you, if you believe in it so much, sometimes you just got to do it alone. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. That's so true, yeah. though. And then, you know, that's beautifully said, but one of the questions I want to ask Who is winning a one on one? You always oh, yeah. yeah. how are you gonna pick? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. We the last time we you can ask him too. <laughs> last time we played it wasn't close. Oh damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah, no. He's People, like, oh, yeah. let's run another one. Come, yeah. <laughs> we no, we we were talking about it at the on the live stream, Brown oh, Wallace. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But like, we should do a live stream one on one. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, Man, I, yeah, not, that'd be dope. I'm not ducking smoke. Oh, I'll do it on live. <laughs> He showers Ari in one on one. We need to see that, bro. We need to see that. Yeah, when he's in sick. the off season with West Virginia. Yeah. As you know, soon as you said who is winning, I was like, I know where this is going. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's no. so funny, but you know, it, it's it's beautiful to see you have that connection with your brother too. Bro. Yeah, no, it we, is. Yeah. We we're like we're locked in, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm I don't admit it to him, but like I guess he'll see this too. But <laughs> I'm his like biggest fan. Yeah. Like me and him have been competitive for so long. There's certain like things that I've done as a brother to him that he probably didn't like at the moment. moment like yeah. I remember I set parental controls on his iPhone <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that he shit. couldn't access Netflix over a certain time, time so he yeah. had to go to sleep on time to get like proper rest. Yeah. So he probably didn't like those in the moment. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like yeah, like we're locked. Like I just yeah. I genuinely want to see him like be succeed. Yeah. In life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to see him like get achieve all of his goals. Like that's. That's my guy. That's love, yeah, man. man. I mean, that that's a perfect way to end the podcast yeah. as well, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know, man. That's a, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. No, You're very amazing. insightful on things and you, you carry yourself in a manner that somebody, you know, even your parents can be proud of, man. For yeah. uh, Even kids can look up to you in a manner where like, yo, this is someone that I can strive to be. You know, and then that's the only thing we can do is just mm-hmm. put out something better for people to, you know, not only like be like me, but something that can be attainable and achievable and keep doing what you're doing, chase your dreams, Put yourself yeah. out there and then leave the rest to whatever, you know, it is. It, it, as That's you said, right. life, it is what it is, yeah. you know, and just keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep your head, head held high and you're good, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. I appreciate y'all for having me. It's been yeah. great, honestly. And like, <laughs> even just like talking to you, because this is the first time I've met you. Yeah, guys. first yeah. time, yeah. And like, even just like, I could tell like the, the messages that you're saying, like the characters, like, yeah, this is like... This is amazing. Yeah, you know, like, so I, I feel it, privileged to be on it. <laughs> no, 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 and I man. feel like really like privileged to like meet y'all for the first time. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But yeah, so. Privilege all ours, man. And having people like you, there's all these platforms about having just different conversations that's insightful and just being, you know, being that role models that sometimes we feel like we're never there, especially yeah. people that look like us. And yeah. now people that, if you know, if that's what it is and that people see it that way is great. Even if it's one person that we impact and yeah, then that's the greatest, right. you know, fulfilling thing for us. So, you know. Yeah. I want, you know, thank you everybody for tuning in. Yeah. We'll be having the yes, one-on-one sorry. live stream for each other. Sorry, That's yeah, going to be coming talking, in. It's, it's recorded now. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> right. But yeah, thank you for tuning in, boys. At girls. You know, so we'll see you on the next one. Peace. See you.